Guys, now it's time for our favorite segment where we get to bring on an expert in the industry and talk a little bit more about uh, their expertise and their background. We're really excited to have on today Dustin Korth from Custom Offsets. Dustin, how the hell are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, of course. And I'll tell you, I'm a little scared. You, you called me an expert. I don't know about all that, but, uh, but we'll give her <laughs> the best shot here anyway. <laughs> we call Paul an expert, too. You're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we use that term pretty loosely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> Dustin, give us a little background about your history in diesel performance. Yeah, man. So I grew up, uh, I grew up little town of Waldo, Wisconsin. If, if any of you guys know where that is, I'll, uh, I'll buy you a cookie next time I see a town of 452 people. So, I mean, I've been around trucks since I was a little kid, uh, grew up on a dairy farm, 50 cows. Um, granddad was a gas truck guy, but you know, growing up in that kind of, in that world, you've always been around, um, pickup trucks as a whole. And so naturally I was drawn to diesels. I bought my first six liter when I was still in college. Um, loved that truck hated the catastrophic head gasket failure that came with it um <laughs> sold that one uh got through college whatever and then uh most recently i uh, i picked up a uh dream truck of mine since i was a little kid uh, i picked up an 07 uh 2500 hd classic with the lz duramax in it so i've kind of been around i would say the aftermarket truck world for really my entire life i mean even from my first pickup truck in high school throwing wheels and tires on it all the way up to what we got going on now. So um, it's been a, been a hell of a ride. And, and like I said, I'm super excited to be here. That's so cool. I love that. Well spoken. <laughs> I love that. Well, well-rounded background yeah. too, right? Where a lot of times we do get stuck in like this very specific niche of just diesel performance, but I kind of like the idea of opening it up to like your exposure of being around trucks, being young and throwing wheels and tires on a vehicle, well, I like think, all know, of us. Paul, right? when we talked about doing this interview originally, it was every guy that we talked to you know, they're willing to throw money at the performance of the truck. They want the truck to sound cool, perform nicely. But these are guys that either already have or they have their sights set on wheels and tires and, and that appeal, right? They want that truck to aesthetically look pleasing as well as perform. It, that's why this ties in so nicely. Yeah, and, and I <laughs> that's a good point, too, because I think that, honestly, we skip over wheels and tire details simply because, like, that, it's just assumed. It's right, like it's, you have 35-inch yeah. tires and aftermarket rims. We get it. Yeah, keep going. But I, 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 I was also very interested to have you on today, Dustin, to talk more about that. Uh, what do you do over there uh, with custom offsets? So my official title is uh, divisional manager. So I know we talked a little bit in the um, kind of when we set this all up, you know, uh, when it comes to custom offsets, I'm involved in it. So everything from our day to day operations of our, our social media marketing team, uh, you know, if guys aren't familiar with us, we're uh, about 550,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. We're about, we're just over half a million followers on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're on Facebook. I mean, we're, we're LinkedIn. We're, we're everywhere. So I, uh, I help oversee that team. Uh, I oversee all of our relations with our vendors. Um, I'm also in, like, it, it depends on what week it is, but usually it's like three to four videos a week. So I'm in uh, a lot of the YouTube front forward facing stuff. Uh, help with a little bit of the shop stuff as well so pretty much when it comes to custom offsets if it's out there i've been involved with it in in some way shape or form wow i mean it, it i think of and granted you know where we're at in northern illinois custom offsets is a very big name uh, across the u.s you know yeah. you see custom offset stickers on trucks a lot of times guys will have in their signature you know this is where they got their wheels so on and so forth um so i mean there's definitely a presence right and those stats definitely speak for themselves absolutely yeah i mean we know it as a, a household name around trucks it, it, again in just in general right not yeah. even outside of diesel uh so it's always fun to have you guys on and, and learn more about that i think one of the things that i thought was really interesting is kind of the where did you get started how did this come about because like you said you have a huge presence now you're a household name now but if i remember back it, you know my dad wouldn't know custom offsets right. right like how long have you guys been around where did you get started yeah we're a very young company when you look at at the lineage of custom offsets and i use that term uh because it really it truly does have a lineage um we were founded in, in 2013 so only eight years ago eight and a half years ago uh, by our founder and uh, now retired CEO. Uh, Sean's done very well for himself, but Sean Chartier founded the business. And really, it it started on a, a principle of nothing more than Sean had at the time a Cadillac CTS, and he was looking for aftermarket wheels for it. And 
you know, for those of you guys that are listening, if, if you've ever searched for aftermarket wheels, especially your first set of aftermarket wheels, fitment can be really difficult. Yeah. It's really hard to understand what can you fit, what can't you fit. If you're a, a goon like me and you have a Chevy with square wheel wells, how much trimming are you going to have to do to put a 14 wide on it? You know, there, there's all of those details that you can you can scour forums for days and days and days and get, you know, get answers from guys about why well, did this? Why did that? Will this fit? Will that fit? You know, everyone's definition of trimming is a little bit different. How much did you have to trim, et cetera? And so Sean thought that's enough of this. Right. He ended up uh, basically said, what if there was a, a place where guys could go to and see real photo examples of wheel and tire and suspension setups on, on vehicles, cars or trucks? Right. Because back then we didn't even know we were going to be a truck company. We just knew that we wanted to help people figure out what fit their their rides, because much like them, we also really enjoy putting aftermarket wheels and tires on. So we founded the gallery, which is uh, now about 100,000 custom trucks. It's a place where guys can go upload photos, upload details of I'm on this lift kit. I have these wheel and tire specs. I trimmed this much and then put photos with that so guys can go through and, and uh, pick those out and, and look at and say, you know, this is, this is the look I'm going for. These are the specs I need. And then they can purchase confidently and, and know that what they're going to get is going to fit. So we did that eight years ago. It sounds like forever ago, uh, or it feels like forever ago to us. It really wasn't that long ago to, to most people, you know. <laughs> it, it Well, and it's crazy, too, because I think now that we think about it, like, it one, if you guys haven't checked it out, it, it is an awesome impressive. resource. Yeah. yeah, you absolutely. It, it answers all of those questions that we all have. And it's funny, too, because if all of us are parts of some sort of diesel Facebook page right. or Facebook group or whatever, or even back in the day on the forums, um, and man, being a new guy, you just get harassed right. as you ask these questions because they're asked every day. I mean, there's still guys who are like, how do I do this? What's this going to look like? Let's see those pictures. It, it's a big commitment. You know what I mean? You're not talking about, about which, you know, which car wash am I going to stop at today? You're talking about changing the look of your truck for a long period of time. You want to be confident. All right. Well, I put myself. Big, right. Uh, I mean, you look at most wheel and tire packages for a, for a pickup truck, a set of 20 by 12s and 35s, you're, you're talking Twenty eight hundred to four thousand dollars. That's a lot of money to yeah. to you know just guess and then pray it fits. <laughs> right. Well, and Dustin, you made a good point there with you know fitments and clearances. I mean, you can you can take like a, a newer Ram, let's say, okay, like a 2015, 2018 Cummins or 2500 Dodge, and you could fit a 35 on like a stock wheel. But once you do an aftermarket wheel where the offset sticks out, you know, you go to a wider wheel, you're going to have a harder time clearing that 35. So it's those type of situations that I feel when you're on the forums and trying to look at that type of advice or information, things get really skewed really, really fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know one of the things for me, first like when, when the when the real like negative offsets and all this came out yeah. i had a real hard time wrapping my head around the measurements can we just take a quick pause for our newer listeners dustin can you walk us through uh, what do some of these measurements mean what are the important numbers as somebody is looking at wheel and tire combos if they are looking at just the measurements what do they need to know yeah and i mean uh, uh I, I giggle a bit here because to be honest there's you could do a whole podcast episode just on how to figure out measurements between tire sizes and metrics and standards <laughs> and fitments and offsets and all that stuff but kind of the um the cliff notes version of that is when you know when you're looking at wheel and tire setups specifically wheel setups there's two numbers that three numbers that really come into uh, importance right the first one is diameter that's going to be you know 16 17 18 20 22 24 26 there's even some 30s out there right some of the show truck guys are running like 30 by 16s which is absolutely freaking massive because Nuts. the first set of wheels and tires i ever put on my my half ton gmc back in the day my tires were only 31 inches in diameter <laughs> <laughs> so yeah your first number there is going to be uh is diameter obviously right that's going to be the big one um paired with that is going to be wheel width you know most of your uh your i would say more conservative setups are going to be nine wide ten wide Although 12 wide isn't really that uncommon anymore. I remember when I was a kid, 12 wide was that was, was big. like old cow. That was <laughs> that huge. was big. I, in, in 13, I had a 20 by 12, and that was a big wheel. Yeah. Now, a 12 wide isn't shit. No, nothing. Yeah, I mean, a 12 wide is almost standard. I daily yeah. drive a set of 22 14s, and I'm trying to figure out how I can stuff 16 wides in there now. <laughs> Jeez, wow, that's crazy. 
That's yeah. big. But yeah, so so the, obviously your wheel diameter and width is going to be the physical size of your wheel. And then the one that gets everybody is the offset. So a negative offset is going to push your wheel out further from the truck. So a minus 76 offset is going to stick out further than a minus 44. That's where it gets confusing for guys because they're like, wait a second, what? it's minus, shouldn't it be the other way? But where it comes down to is that offset is measured from the back pad, right, where, where that wheel actually mounts to the hub in relation to the center of the wheel. So if you have a negative offset, it means that your wheel sticks out further, so therefore it's tucked more out, right, and that pad is, is going to be mounted further to the left side of the wheel than it would be, say, a positive offset, which is going to be the other way. It's going to push that pad inwards towards the right, which is going to tuck that whole wheel up under the truck. Nicely said. Absolutely. I wish, it, I, I wish somebody would have told me that like when this when I first had to start trying to wrap my head around this. Stuff. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, th- no, that's it. that's interesting because it is, it is one of those that we hear guys throw these numbers around sometimes. And I know especially on a podcast where you can't see it, um, you know, it's nice to have it explained. Well, clearly. I think where things, in, Dustin, correct me here, let's kind of elaborate on, then you, you, you select the wheel, okay, you get that offset. That still doesn't mean a whole lot because now you have to get the rubber to match. And you can get Correct. a wider tire than the width of the wheel, and then that's going to protrude off off of where the sidewall of that wheel is that much more, you know, from the width of the wheel. Sure. So h- yeah. how does that work in, in relation? Yeah, I mean, that's, you, you nailed it right there. And uh, tires, I would say, are a little bit easier to wrap your head around just because most of those come in, in standard sizing. You know, most of your truck tires are going to be 33, 12 and a half R20, for example, which is 33 in diameter, 12 and a half inches wide, and then for a 20 inch wheel. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do some really funky stuff there too in terms of like sidewalls, because especially when you start, stre- you know, getting up into some of those those bigger wider wheels those 12 wides those 14 wides and even in extreme cases 16 wides you know you can start to stretch that sidewall a little bit and you can get creative with your fitment you know like on, on my duramax for example um that's on a four and a half inch bds lift kit um and a set of 22 by 14s but then i went with a street tire because that sidewall stretch actually clears a little bit better and so i can i go full lock i mean lock to lock with with very minimal scrubbing uh, which is pretty impressive because most guys that want to run 14 wides on Duramaxes have to either hack the hell out of their front bumpers <laughs> and, or help the and, go up the and they still don't have full lock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah totally exactly. true. <laughs> we've, we've seen trucks in the shop where half of their front bumpers are missing. <laughs> yeah, it's clipped. I wouldn't call it shaved yeah, no, or it's, trimmed. It's, it is like clipped, clipped off. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that that is pretty impressive too. And I, and I, I guess that's one of those as guys look at it. You, you have to make some trades here between – what it looks like and what the function of it is yeah. right um how how crazy of tires do we get into as, as we start to start to talk about this did did custom offsets always dabble in this like really kind of crazy custom nutty super wide tires or or did you guys actually start off with something more practical we've always kind of been on the i would say on the more aggressive side um y- you know even to to uh today even when you look at really what we specialize in you know there's a lot of places that you can go and buy uh oem style you know size and style fitments for wheels and tires you can find those every xyz.com you know retailer online but we we really specialize in that that aftermarket fitment that more aggressive fitment you know um because at the core of what it is that's what sean wanted to do and really it's what i continue to want to do right like i like wide wheels and i like big high lift kits and all of that stuff so you know you'll see us continue to really try to stay on the forefront of that because at our core it's just who we are it's just what we do so let's talk a little bit about business operation, right? Because this is something that, you know, I always have a lot of interest in as being a part of Calibrated Power Duramax Tuner. Paul and I, Justin included, we know what the behind the scenes look like from an order being placed to being processed, prepped, and getting ready to ship. Now, you guys have a extremely large inventory. It's advertised on the website, and I can... You can offer me at that one-stop shop where I can pick the wheel, pick the tire, you mount, balance, and ship. Walk us through like what 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 is that process like? What 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 does that look like behind the scenes? Yeah, for sure. 
So just to, to kind of give you guys some scale too on, on really what the business looks like, you know, back in 2013, we were founded in a garage. There was Sean who was a part-time employee and that was it. You know, we, fast forward eight years, we now have four locations, four physical locations, two of which are marketing buildings. And then the other two, which are actually order fulfillment. So warehousing and, and Mount Bound ship, um, both of those are in the Midwest, one down near Chicago and then one up here towards Green Bay by us. Um, the newest of which is the one up here. That's roughly 350,000 square feet of warehouse space. It houses, last number I pulled out of the reporting software told me just over 100,000 different wheel and tire pieces. So um, we keep those in stock, ready to ship, I mean, to your door. You know, as long as it's the, we have the right bolt pattern size finish, we're talking seven days to your door. So. So realistically, if I got a bug up my rear, wanted to order new tires and wheels and you, you had them in stock, which I know, you know, there are shortages in this this world that we live in in current time. But I could literally if you had wheels and tires in stock, I could place an order and within five to seven business days, they would be at my doorstep ready to install on my truck. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's why as long as it's in inventory, our guys will pull it. So again, we have we run two shifts of guys, um, you know, both full time Monday through Friday. There's some weekend work as well. But um there's guys dedicated to picking and pulling so once the order comes through they'll go out they'll grab it off the rack and this is where i wish to dear god uh that i could just showcase you guys some of the video footage because it's super cool the the warehouse walls are 36 feet tall we stack product floor to ceiling on on racking so these guys are going through these these little narrow corridors with these these cherry picker machines going up 30 feet pulling boxes out sending it down they give it to another guy. He sends it up to the line. And then we have seven total production lines where wheel and tire packages are coming together. And then there's guys that are mounting them, balancing them, uh, you know, QAing them, making sure that they're, the wheels aren't scratched, the finishes look good, all that stuff, putting in TPMS, getting you lug nuts. And then all of that gets packaged up on a nice little pallet and it goes out the door. And in seven days, it's sitting on your doorstep. We're all in all right now. <laughs> Well, well, and, and and what I'm thinking too is not only the uh, immensity of of the operation, but also the growth. Uh, you, you know, the change from going, like you said, eight years ago to being in a garage, and I'd imagine like mostly being on the phone and sending emails to Drop actually fulfilling, and, right? You know. To to designing. Um, what what has that been like? What was what did that transition look like? It's been incredible and terrifying. And the biggest pain in my tail that I've ever had in my life, but it's been a blast, man. We've been, we've been super, super fortunate to grow so rapidly. And I, I think that, you know, from the outside looking in a lot of times guys will be like, Oh, it's so nice. You know, it grows so fast, but man, we've almost had, you know, some businesses struggle with, with not being able to scale fast enough, we've actually had the opposite where we scale too fast. And, and we've seen that a couple times over the last couple of years where we've scaled so rapidly that we have to hit the stop button and, and figure out where our bearings are and get all the necessary help we need and then steam forward again. We've done it like three years in a row now. It's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How has, I mean, I know, I know we've talked to a lot of different industries around diesel performance and trucks. Chris, I know you were mentioning like the part shortages and, and right. just supply chain issues. How has uh, COVID impacted you guys? That's a, a very multi-layer question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's there's so many different facets to that. You know, um, between the shipping delays and the rising cost of containers. You know, just for for reference, we have our own uh, a couple of in-house wheel bar- uh, brands. One of them being Archon Off Road. Um, when Archon first founded, they were paying between three and four thousand dollars to ship a container of wheels from China to America. Uh, that's now upwards of twenty to twenty-five thousand so, dollars. Oh my, oh my god. god! Yeah, it's been it's been insane, man. Between that and then you can't get containers anyway because they sit outside the ports because they can't process them fast enough. And you know, raw aluminum went up, and and you know, there there's a lot of things that we could really say. Hey, man, the last couple of years have been extremely challenging for us, but. You know, on the flip side of that, we were very fortunate. And I I know a lot of other guys in the the auto world were as well, because, you know, as the world slowed down, as sporting events stopped, as as, you know, concerts ceased to be had and all that stuff, 
you had a lot of disposable income that, that guys were looking at their pickup in the driveway and saying, you know, I could put a lift kit on that by myself in my driveway and put new wheels and tires on it. And then they would. Yeah. So we were very, very blessed and, and super humbled that we did really, really well. Um, but yeah, we, we felt the squeeze just as much as everybody else did in terms of, of, you know, product shortages and stuff like that. No, I mean, 2020 and 2021, I mean, Paul, Justin, and I, we talk about this often. We saw a lot with what we do. Guys would, you know, they, they had the time, you know, yeah. and I think that that's a big portion of this is guys finally had the time they've been, you know, saving money. They've been doing their things to be financially stable, to do some upgrades to their trucks, but they might not necessarily have had the time with their work schedule and, and things like that. So 2020 and, and even in 2021, it was an opportunity for things to slow down in a sense for them to be able to achieve their personal goals. Yeah. Um, and we, we've seen that in like, you know, to Dustin, to your point, lifts and wheels, tires, things like that and the performance side and just minimal upgrades sure right? um so it's it's been crazy how the demand increases there's product you know product shortages and things like that and it just it took the auto the auto industry by storm i feel in the aftermarket sure well demand rises supply drops right so it, it puts everybody in that crunch time but what i love is that there are still so many options. I mean, you're talking about a hundred thousand pieces of wheel and tire, well, yeah, right, sitting right. around just waiting to go. And 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 there are still guys. I know that you know. Hey, you buy a new truck if you could find one. Um, the first thing guys want to do is put wheels and tires that's, on it. How many brand do. new vehicles do we get in here? Where guys yeah. are asking us about the warranty with with thirty five inch tires yeah. on it, right? Yeah. You know, and a new yeah. set of rims, and you're like. I, mean, I get you, sir. That's what it is. I mean, any vehicle I've ever bought before the vehicle I even have, you know, you yeah. want a wheel and tire. You're already having that in your mind of what wheel and tire combo are you going to go with. I got right? it. That makes it, that makes your vehicle your vehicle, I feel. Well, yeah. well it, it does. It, I think there's definitely a bit of personalization that goes into it. And now with one of the things I've always been interested in is all of the designs. I, I mean, even God forbid you find yourself in a good year and you're looking around. There's just, there's poster after poster of options right. of options. And, and if you oh, jump yeah. online, if you're brave enough to jump online and just google aftermarket rims for my duramax like well, have you ever yeah. gone to go to custom offsets one time i've, I've done this right yeah. i bought wheels when i when i first bought my, my my ram you go to custom offsets you type in your vehicle and then you put in the the wheel size that you're looking for you know to dustin's point you know i knew i wanted a 22 12 wide right and then there's 15 fucking pages of wheels <laughs> you know and that was that was just black milled face by the way it right. wasn't chrome there was nothing else <laughs> you get lost in it it is just insane the amount of options it's like you can't even comprehend how many physical options there are how 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 does that work as far as designing is that something that you guys are intricately involved with are you guys always working with like a design team to design new rims is it sourced is it like Oh, you, you know, a lot of people design rims, so we pull the best ones and, and put them together. Yeah, so I mean, we we really like in terms of sorting on the website, we sort that all by by sales data. So, um, you know, guys will see uh, the first wheels that you see are, are going to be the most popular styles out there, right? And we do that because if if other guys like them, there's a good chance that that the rest of the guys will like them too. So, but in terms of like, you'd asked a little bit about design work and stuff like that, so. Custom Offset doesn't do a lot of that on our own. Um, we we mostly carry products from the big manufacturers, the TISs, the fuels, the moto metals, the Archon Off Road stuff like that. But we're super fortunate that we do have a couple of in-house wheel brands as well. You know, Anthem Off Road and, and Archon Off Road. So those guys are every year they're designing three to four new wheels and they're working with the factories and getting renders and then getting proofs and and so it's. It's cool because I get to see all that happen, but I don't have to deal with any of the headaches that go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> of designing new lines in circles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so Paul. Many, so many ways you can design a wheel, right? We've, we've mean, said that. We've said that. It's That's so exactly crazy. it. I think about, I remember, so the last the, the last wheel setup I had was a, a hostile striker, right? And, okay. and a few years ago, that, that bi-directional or directional wheel, like that, that really wasn't a thing. Now it's, Almost every truck that I see come into the shop has a directional style spoke design. Right. You, you... Yeah, and that was that's something we're we're super proud of is like, uh, you know, the the true directional we like to call it or the or the proper directional. Right. Um, Archon calls it. Um, you know that it, it was kind of a thing uh, up until a couple of years ago, but it wasn't super popular. You know, uh, a lot of the guys were only doing it if they, if they could get it in forged wheels because forged, obviously you can cut a left and a right, you know, no, one, no one really wanted the monkey with, 
with having two part numbers, right? Two SKUs, one left side, one right side right. For, for a cast wheel. And that's where Archon stepped up and said, you know what? We, we believe in proper directional enough that we're going to do it. And then they did, and it was fantastic. That's but, super cool. It does look awesome. Yeah, I'm with it. Man, I think this has been really, really insightful to get some of the kind of the behind the scenes and the, you, you know, a better understanding of, of what really sets you guys apart. Uh, what does the future look like? Where, where, where do we see custom offsets and the Archon Offroad and the other brands? Where are they going? Yeah, I mean, uh, to put that in one word, it's forward, right? Uh, as always, um, <laughs> you know, we always try to, to innovate. We always try to, to expand on product offerings. Um, we're always really just trying to look at our business and say, you know, what else do we need, uh, you know, as enthusiasts, right? Because when you, when you drive through our parking lot, there's not a stock pickup in the parking lot. Every one of them's built. And so <laughs> for us, it's really simple. We sit down at the end of the year and say, what kind of stuff did we buy this year that we couldn't get from us? Let's go get that. <laughs> I like that. So, I like yeah, that. Man, I mean, obviously, we've got in-house wheel brands. We've talked about maybe getting into the tire game, um, you know, just because, again, I think that, that we have really good insight on that. Um, you know, we've talked about maybe trying to partner up with someone on, on suspension of some sort. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of stuff in, in, the, um, in the fire. We just launched a power sports division, so if you guys are into, like, ATV, UTV, side-by-side -side stuff. We've got a division for that now. Um, Archon's doing some cool stuff with some new wheels that we're really excited, though. Should come out Q2 of next year, I think. Hopefully, maybe, if the world doesn't... <laughs> Fingers know, crossed. <laughs> Open a prayer. I hear you. But, yeah, I mean, lots of stuff, man. Lots of stuff coming down the coming down the pipeline, uh, you know, as, as we continue to just try and diversify here a little bit and, and again, really just be the one-stop shop for guys to come in and say... I want to build my truck, but I, I don't want just wheels and tires. I want the whole shebang. You know, how can we help you get there? Yeah. Super cool. I think that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. If uh, our listeners want to follow along and learn more about what you guys have to offer, where should they go? Uh, easiest place to find us is the website. That's customoffsets.com. It's actually going to redirect you to customwheeloffset.com. Don't ask me why. It just does that. It's a thing. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise... Uh, you know, if you just want to follow along with the journey, check us out. You guys can check us all out on all the major socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, custom offsets is all there. Uh, if you guys are interested in following me personally, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at dusty.co. That's dusty with an I because someone already has dustin.co. So <laughs> it's a better call today. <laughs> Love it. Love yeah. it. Well, thanks again so much. Listeners, stick around. Uh, we got more Diesel Performance Podcast coming at you in just a moment. Treat, protect, and enhance the performance of your diesel fuel system year-round with XDP's Diesel Power Plus Fuel Additive. Specially formulated for all grades of diesel fuel, XDP's Diesel Power Plus gives you an all-in-one fuel additive that cleans and protects your fuel injection system while also providing you with a cetane and lubricity increase. Not only does Diesel Power Plus enhance the performance of your fuel system, it provides you with additional protection against the damaging effects of corrosion, water, and the formulation of algae and bacteria. This concentrated year-round formula is for use in all seasons and helps control icing and freeze-up during those cold winter months. With a standard dosage of 1 ounce per 32 gallons of fuel, one bottle can treat up to 500 gallons of diesel fuel. To find out more about XDP's Diesel Power Plus, check out xdp.com or find a local dealer near you. What is Whirly Custom Fab's thermostat bypass valve and why is it an important upgrade for your 2017 to 2019 L5P Duramax? 2017 to 2019 L5P Duramax trucks Feature a unique thermostat assembly for the Allison transmission, which allows fluid to bypass the auxiliary cooler and use engine heat in the radiator coolant to reach ideal operating temps more quickly in cold weather. When the desired temperature is reached, the thermostat is supposed to open and allow fluid to flow forward into the auxiliary cooler, which helps maintain transmission fluid temperatures at a safe level. Now the issue. This thermostat is prone to get stuck closed. So when the fluid gets hot and reaches the point that it needs to be cooled via the auxiliary cooler, 
the fluid is instead bypassed by the closed thermostat and returned to the transmission uncooled. Hotter fluid breaks down quicker, which leads to poor fluid performance and potentially premature damage and shortened transmission life. If you tow with your truck or live in a warm climate, this bypass plug is a must. Whether your truck is a daily driver, work truck, tow rig, or competition race truck, this is an issue that plagues all 17 to 19 L5Bs. When running one of WC Fab's shop trucks at the drag strip, they noticed temperatures reaching the unsafe zone. After some investigation, they found the auxiliary cooler up front was cool to the touch. The hot fluid was not making its way to the cooler. Upon further research, they found that even factory stock trucks were experiencing the same issue. With this discovery, the thermostat bypass plug was born. The CAD-designed, CNC-machined, anodized billet aluminum bypass plug requires a simple 15-minute installation. WC Fab has been building high-performance transmissions for the L5P platform for many years now and immediately started including this made-in-the-USA piece with every transmission that they build. Tested in-house on both their shop trucks and customer trucks, the Transmission Cooler Thermostat Bypass Plug for 2017 to 2019 L5P Duramax trucks can drop the fluid temperature from 15 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit by reducing fluid flow restriction to the trans cooler. The Exergy Performance Fuel System Saver works. If you have a CP4 equipped fuel pump, which is commonly found on the 2011 to 2016 LML Duramax, and also the uh, early 6.7 6 liter Ford Power Stroke engine, they're known for failure, period. Now, most of the time, if you put a lift pump on the truck, you'll prevent a lot of the potential failures. If you do regular maintenance, you can help help prevent the potential failures. But at the end of the day, there's still a risk that no matter what you do, that CP4 could fail. And when they fail, they have a track record for sending all of the metal shavings downstream. So you end up needing a whole new fuel system, new lines, new injectors, new tubes, new everything. That could be very expensive. Even if you're under warranty or you find a bundle package for a great price, there's still a lot of labor that goes into that, that job. The fuel system saver increases the amount of protection post CP4. So it's not gonna stop your CP4 from failing. What it's gonna do is that God forbid the CP4 gives up and it starts to send metal debris through the truck, it's gonna stop it before it hits the rest of your fuel system. And that's why they call it the fuel system saver. If you have a CP4 pump on your truck, you absolutely need to give DuramaxTuner.com a call today and get yourself a fuel system safer. Listeners, it's time for our favorite segment here with our remote support expert, Sean Lynn. Sean, how the hell are you? Great. How are you, Paul? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, good to be here for sure, and always something going on. <laughs> you said it, Sean. Now, hey, we've been talking a little bit about the segment uh, a lot of times we talk about like general troubleshooting or general topics, but I thought it might be fun to take a couple of these segments here and dive into some specific situations, give some real world examples, and then talk about how we worked our way through them. Sounds like fun to you? Yeah, I got something on mine. Excellent, man. What's the truck? So this truck is a 2020 Power Stroke, which as most of you know, is not something you can flash the engine with through the OBD port. It's actually something you have to send in to us, and uh, the transmission tuning is done with EasyLink. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, so 2020 Power Stroke tuning, super cool. You can still get switch on the fly. You can still get trans tuning. Uh, you just can't flash the engine, like you said, through the OBD2 port. So it's a bench flash, meaning you're going to remove the ECM and ship it in. Now, some of the other trucks with like similar security settings, like an L5P Duramax, we're able to get unlocked ECMs and we can exchange them. So you can like pretty much just swap it in a day and keep driving. With the power strokes, those ECMs are just not available. So the only way to do it is a bench flash. Um, okay, so so we sold one of those to a customer with switch on the fly and trans tuning, I assume. Mm -hmm. Excellent. What, what were the symptoms or what was the problem that you were first introduced to this customer with? So the issue didn't come from the tuning part of it, like the engine tuning part of it. It came after they installed the EasyLink transmission tune on there. Um, the customer had large tires on the truck, a lot larger than the factory. The customer tried to set the tire size 
to 35 inches, and there's a number of different things you need to run in order to do this. And he called up really frustrated. You know, it took a few days to get this all dialed in, along with a few phone calls with EasyLink. Okay, so so when he first had the problem, he was tr- the the issue came up when he was very first trying to change his tire size through Easy Link. Now, engine tuning is usually where we adjust tire size. I don't know that Power Stroke, that twenty twenty Power Stroke ECM architecture really well. Where would we normally set tire size? So the Easy Link, depending on what kind of truck it is, obviously will change the tire size in the body control module or the TCM, depending on what year and what truck it is. Okay. And when it tells one module that the tire size is now 35 inches, if every module does not know that, you will have codes galore on your dash like oh, this no. guy did. So, so codes galore. So did he have just a check engine light or were there like flashing messages? There was a service message on his dash. There was a check engine light for implausible vehicle speed because one module was reading a 31 inch tire the other module was reading a 35 inch tire you know Ooh, yeah so it thinks that there's like a broken drive shaft or something crazy going on yes, okay absolutely gotcha all right and that wouldn't actually be a broken drive shaft but you guys know what i mean all right um okay so he gets a message on the dash he gets a check engine light and you said he messed with it for a few days on his own trying to get it to work yeah, he was really frustrated because he just installed it. Now he's getting codes and stuff on the dash. So we had to have a few phone calls with EasyLink and go over exactly what needed to happen. Um, there is a limitation there. If you try to set the tire size above 35 inches, um, you could get the same issue again. Yeah. Yeah, because he, if I remember rightly, did he have 35s or did he have an even larger tire than that? He actually has larger tires than that, but it only lets you set it up to 34 and a half. Gotcha. From okay. what they have set up in, in the easy link functions. Okay. How did we get this resolved? Did we have to like have him send his ECM back and swap out the ECM again? Were we able to do it all through easy link updates? Yeah. So easy link reached out to him. Um, I was going over it with Tim, our tuning guy here. There's a powertrain control module relearn and a transmission control module relearn that basically needs to be done. It's under functions in the EasyLink app itself. And it basically tells every module in the truck, hey, now we have 35-inch tires or whatever, so that all the modules know and they're all on the same page. This is a very similar thing on some of the Cummins trucks as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So you've run into this on other platforms and had to go through this relearn process. And it's funny because when I think of EasyLink, I think of flashing, data logging, monitoring. I've never thought of going into the function and and doing any relearn process through there, but it's nice to know that it's handy and it's available. Yeah. The functions in there is really nice because if people want to change their speed limiter or their tire size and such, along with other things in there, you have the ability to do so with the EasyLink versus other platforms, which cannot do body control module programming. Yeah, absolutely. Good call. Well, I think this was a fun one, man. I really like this this example. Uh, if you had to give a pro tip to somebody who just just also ran into a similar issue like this, what would your pro tip be? I would say uh, tar- try to run the uh, PCM relearn and the TCM relearn if you have a newer power stroke, if you get codes after changing your tire size, and then if you have a newer Cummins and you change your tire size, you would run ABS initialization. That's awesome. Good stuff, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Paul. Listeners, stick around. Coming up next, we're going to have our shop tech, our favorite shop tech, uh, Jeremy Garnett, on the show. And we'll be talking a little bit about some troubleshooting and diagnostics that he's been working on uh, down there on the lift. Folks, now it's time for our Super Tech segment with our favorite Super Tech, Jeremy Garnett. Jeremy, how the hell are you? Wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Uh, We are getting close to King of the Streets here. Yeah, we are. So so you're going uh, to kind of work pit crew area for both a King of the Streets competitor, Nick Pregnitz, and for an all-truck challenger, Tim Mahoney. Yes. Are you excited? I I actually am. uh, It's going to be my uh, first work event that I get to go to, and... uh, just to go see what it's all about, like this type of event. Like, right. I've been to other events, but not, not out of state. So okay. it'll be my first out of state work event, you know, nice big four day event. It's, uh, 
it sounds like so much fun your first time. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited just to <laughs> see everybody, meet everybody that's going to be there. I mean, if you're in the area, stop by. I dig it, man. Yeah. Hey, guys, and if you want to follow along with some of the cool stuff that Jeremy's working on, jump on over to his Instagram page. Your handle is? Uh, jgarnett00. Can't miss him. Uh, Jeremy, we got a really cool project to talk about today. And I say cool because I've gotten to watch it from the outside and not had to put a hand on it. I don't know that you would describe it as cool. Uh, no, not cool at all. <laughs> Lay it on me, man. What's the vehicle we're talking about uh, today? An 06 LBZ Express van. So a Duramax Express van. I hate vans with a passion. Just every um, experience I've ever had around a Duramax van has been a nightmare. Uh, you and me too. <laughs> or you and me both. <laughs> Uh, I hated my life. All right, man. Um, now, this one, walk me through it. What was the initial set of complaints or problems from the customer when the van came in? Well, the initial complaint was that um, he believed he had a bad turbo. Um, check engine light's been on you know, forever, but believed he had a bad turbo because the veins aren't moving properly, and then truck's not building rail, very laggy, and just won't get out of its own way. Man, that's a... That's a double whammy on power, yeah. so I have no fuel or air. Right. So, okay, at that point, did we have one problem or two problems? So we went in and diagnosed. What do what do some of the diagnostics look like? What do you start with when that's a complaint? Um, first, scan tool. So scan tool, test drive. See see what it's going to do if the truck does drive. Uh, right. It did drive. It, it hit 45 miles an hour. It wouldn't go any faster. Oof. Um, but at that point, I just look at all the PIDs that I can possibly want to look at like that i need to look at uh actual desired fuel rail uh turbo vein actual desired mass airflow like just i want to see what the truck's doing and how it's reacting that's such a good good point to make on diagnostics right is is you're not just looking at how much rail pressure am i getting or what's my mm3 it's like (laughs) well let's look at the actual and the desired together because it's not necessarily it can i build twenty six thousand. K or 26,000 PSI of rail pressure. It's, right. <laughs> can I build it when I demand it, and then will it sustain it? Uh, yeah, exactly. Actually, there was a guy on uh, fans of the uh, Facebook fans of the yeah. podcast uh, group, and that was actually a question all the time. <laughs> look at both. <laughs> what is right. it actual, and what is it desiring? That's Let, right. Look at them both. That's right. So okay, I dig that. All right, so found out it had low rail pressure. Yeah, low rail pressure. So it's commanding, you know, 12k, and uh, the truck. Uh, won't build past 5k so it'll build 5k rail won't build any higher uh, look at mm3 on the injectors mm3 is a little high not out of you know out of the world you know right. not too bad so okay you got a bad c you know you have a bad cb3 it's just not building enough rail pretty good guess um, there yeah so at that point it's a van pull the doghouse do all that stupid shit and <laughs> we um get to the turbo and then we saw you know we were able to get to the plunger on the turbo and see that the veins aren't moving properly and okay you need a new turbo gotcha so 100 or almost 200,000 miles on a a van that every piece of dirt and debris hits the back of it. and those yeah. those vans too the way that it's packaged with the dog housing you also just wonder about like how much airflow are you really getting around right. the engine to like cool things off and things like that so you're you're heating that thing up yeah and then it's also it's a it's a van it's getting work oh and this thing is it's a work van it's 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 a work van <laughs> <laughs> uh had every piece of candy wrapper inside of it and <laughs> yeah you know just it is disgusting and i yeah but um so we did that we got it all apart and just hacked together as well i hate to say it but it's hacked together i mean there wasn't one bolt that was the same on Oh, anything man. so that's so brutal yeah i mean there's probably 20 different hands that touched it before and just not one person knew how to put two bolts together <laughs> so we ended up uh sell recommending okay you need new turbo then we need a new cp3 mm3 on the injectors is pretty high we should probably do a set of injectors right when we do that uh we usually pull the body and then we do the whole job. Um, the customer declined the set of injectors, so we did just the CP3 and the turbo. And we went ahead and did it in the van at this point because it, I didn't see why we needed to pull the body to do that job. I mean, because the turbo is right there, then you, you can get pretty deep in there. You can do it. You can, and we and I did. <laughs> if if you don't mind being wildly uncomfortable for the eight to twelve hours right. that that job takes, <laughs> exactly. sure, you can do it. And again, going back to hate in my life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I did, and 
I got it done and everything. Got the new CP3 put in. The new, you got, got the Y bridge put back in. The new turbo. Got the van running and now it's running, idling perfectly fine. Everything we're all good to go. Drive the van and it's still acting up a little bit. Like okay, what's going on? Now it's building 12k of rail, but it's not. It's commanding 16k of rail. Oh. So go back to it. Okay, hey. Dude, we told you you need a set of injectors. You declined it. Now we need to do the injectors. And he's like, okay, let's let's get it done. I did, was trying to not do that. Sure, you sure. Know, hey, just, listen, I've been cheap and I've been broke. Yeah. <laughs> and both of those things together when I'm looking at a job are like, Meh, do as little as possible. Yeah. And uh, I know we just talked about this a couple weeks ago on that LML that I was dealing with. Sure. You know, where, like, you're, where, where it's also like on the diagnostic side, it's like, listen, we can see there's definitely a problem right. here with the cp3 you probably got a problem right. with with the injectors but if your cp3 is not working properly i can't properly diagnose the uh, injectors exactly so once i did that the actually mm3 went up really out of really high on the injectors yeah and again like different from a couple weeks ago with that lml this one here we actually recommended instead of injectors yeah so okay well now we've already done all that other work and or i have already done all that work other work so Okay, I'm going to try to do these injectors with the body on. No. You, you, you can do it. They say you can do it. You can do it. I did the whole right side of it. So the passenger side, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the hard side first. Yeah. And to me, that looked like the hard side. I recommend that to anybody. Do do the hard side first. Do, do the hard <laughs> thing first. And um, <laughs> that's my pro tip for a day. I love it. Uh, <laughs> so um, I did the right side. All the injectors came out. I was able to do them. I did them fairly quick, probably in about three hours, four hours. Okay. I did the one side. I'm like, all right, cool. This is this is awesome. Downhill from here, boys. It, exactly. I get to the other side, and I go to do the first injector, and the line won't even break loose on top of the injector. Oh, no. I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right. 200,000-mile like, van. Yeah. I'm like I, So the line won't even break loose. I'm like, all right, not the end of the world. I have... I have an extra line around. I'm, I, I'm okay. So I cut the line, and everything, and then I go to the bolt that holds the hold down in, and that don't want to come out. Mm. Like you gotta be, fucker, you gotta be kidding me. So after an hour of working that out, spraying, you know, PB blaster and every other type of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> rust stuff, remover rust possible. Yeah. yeah. So I got the bolt out, and then the injector wouldn't even budge inside the in the valve cover into the head i just Ugh. it wouldn't even budge I'm like all right you know got jaden over and you know he's sitting there inside the van and helping me with the pry bar and coming through the wheel well and i we get it to move a little bit and get it to move and you know this is like you gotta remind you this is like four hours later yeah i ended up getting it to move <laughs> and we ended up getting it to break loose and then i actually got it out okay cool that's it's it, it's got to be downhill from here right and it just has to be well i go to the second injector on that row and now this one's right under the cowl like right dead center of the engine right dead center of the cowl like there's no there, there's like four inches of any uh, yeah movement. of exposed area it, around exactly. it right so same identical thing like the no. line but the line broke loose but the bolt the hold down bolt couldn't get the hold down bolt out no an hour later i got the hold down bolt out i'm like okay maybe we can maybe we i can guess do the this same is thing. the job is like yeah we're just gonna have these nightmares of getting yeah. these things out six hours later i still couldn't get it out oh no yeah i mean um it actually came to me where dj and nick came up to me and they're like jeremy i need you to walk away <laughs> <laughs> and, and i and i did I, I walked away i went over and i started working on the hummer for a while and you know it's doing that stuff and yeah he nick comes up to me and he goes i don't want you to quit on me just <laughs> like, walk away for a little bit the so next morning he's like what you know what do we got to do here like i i gotta pull the body and he's like are you serious we have three more injectors to do and i'm like i i could spend another six hours doing this or i could have the body up in four like what do, what do you what do we do yeah like 
I mean, I've pulled them before, so. And you're also, you're just guessing, because you're still, you still have, once you get this one out, you right. still have two more injectors. Well, and that's what they asked me, too. Where you're like, are all four of these injectors going to be eight hours a piece? Exactly. So that's what they actually asked me. They're like, did you even try the other two yet? And I'm like, in all honesty, does it matter? Because if I can't get this one out, then. That's it. Th that's it, right. I mean, it, we're in the same, I mean, I guess you you know, apples and oranges. I mean, but you know, we, no, no. But I mean, if if I need to get the body up to get right. one injector, I'm going to get the other two while I'm there, no matter what uh, condition they're in. Exactly. No matter what. No matter what's going on. One hundred percent, my thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I did. Um, I after lunch that day, I started pulling the body, had the body up by, you know, the end of the day by the time I went home, which was about four hours. Yeah. And I, then I was like, okay, now I have a clear view. And and again, I, we said my Instagram earlier. If you want to go look at it, look at it, because I took some pretty cool pictures <laughs> <laughs> and posted it. Um, I did have to – so the cap of the injector actually broke off from us trying to you know, work around it so much inside the van. Right. So th there was only the body of the injector, so the electrical part of the injector is actually broken off at this point. What I ended up having to do is weld a nut and bolt with a washer on top of the injector. I actually welded it to the injector. And then I used my slide hammer with a pair of vice grips on it, and started slide hammering the injector out of oh the oh my god out of the valve cover, and it still it, it came out, but it, <laughs> but it was it, it wasn't not like just a little bink bink. It was like beating on a slide hammer. I mean, yeah, yeah, as hard as you can to yeah. get this thing out. So oh my I god. beat on the slide hammer, and it I got it out, and again I I didn't. It, didn't hurt the valve cover or anything like that. Right. So, but I, I got it out and it was probably the dirtiest hole, you know, injector hole, borehole I've ever seen in my life. The dirtiest hole you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> exactly. Take it all you want, but that's a dirty hole. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, we ended up doing that. I mean, it took about 25 minutes to get that injector out with the body off. Oh my God. Um, the other two actually came out. Fairly easy. Fairly easy because you had the body up? I, I believe so, yeah. I was able to just put the slide hammer on it and just... Just yank them out. Yeah, so the bolts were still stuck. The yeah, the bolts... They were uh, still a nightmare. They, they were easier than the first two. Okay. Um, so the bolts were definitely easier than the first two, but yeah, uh, I honestly did not... Thought I was going to be pulling the valve covers, drilling, yeah. and helicoiling you know injector hold down bolts so many times this is what we see is we see i've seen guys just trash heads trying yeah. to get injectors out like just trash them to the point that it's like dude just get a new set of heads like, right we're done like you've you've scored but we these. didn't want to do that i mean this right. well, guy's yeah. already it's a work van right yeah. it's not it's, he's not trying to build a race truck over here he's he doesn't have a show vehicle exactly. he needs this thing to make money like period like right oh what a nightmare job oh yeah no i really just wanted to Go into a little bit of detail on this one because it, again, I hated my life for <laughs> almost a week. So, <laughs> well, I'm glad you got through it. Is it up and running now? Uh, the van is up and running, uh, holds rail perfect. Uh, we could just got to do some tuning to it and little other odds and ends, but the van runs. She's ready for the strip. Yep, I love it. Awesome. So. Well, Jeremy, I'm glad you made it through that that project. I know that was not a fun one no. for you. <laughs> no, no. Probably one of the worst ones I've ever done. Oh, my goodness. Well, hey, thanks for joining us today. Our listeners really appreciate hearing about this. Oh, no problem. Have a good day. Trust me, our blooper reel is full of, uh, full of garbage that definitely should not be seen by the public eye, but my videographers put that up at least once a year. <laughs> Literally, as soon as he hit the button and pointed at us, he started talking. That worked perfect. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs>